Let's get on to energy issues now too and catch up with Jasmine Diab, who's with Global Nuclear Security Partners Australia. Thanks for joining us again, Jasmine. Uh, this uh, debate is really getting hit heated. It's, uh, it's, it's been prominent um, every day of the week in question time today, which must please you no end. Do you think the debate that's focusing on costs and the time of a rollout is focused on the central issues? No, I really don't. Um, I am excited that Australians are talking about nuclear, but I still feel we are being hamstrung by the current legislative restrictions on it, which means that we're delaying decisions by talking about things like cost when really what we need to be doing is removing the bans and having a good analysis about what works well in our energy mix. And we need the right professionals to do that. And those professionals, a lot of them work for government agencies. Uh, they're hamstrung and can't get the data that they need to do the analysis we need to see what nuclear would look like in an Australian energy system. Yeah, I think this is critical and this is where the um, uh, couple of organisations and a lot of advocates are focusing. Get rid of the ban. And, and if Labor really believe their own rhetoric about costs and delays and being agnostic really about technology, they ought to agree to get rid of the ban. If you scrap the ban, then that will allow commercial propositions to come forward and government authorities to actually look at alternatives. Yeah, exactly right. We're not going to have commercial nuclear entities uh, even bother looking at the Australian market when there's a legislative restriction to do that. So a simple act of removing the ban allows us to get the information properly, do the proper analysis. And if at the end of the day, it isn't economically viable for Australia, then we have that evidence to do that. At the moment, a lot of the cost analysis is being plucked from overseas projects. Those projects are not the same as running a project in Australia. We have different regulators. We have dis different supply chains and systems. And so uh, removing those strings through the legislative ban will allow us to decent, like, have a decent analysis of the nuclear problem in Australia. Yes, yeah, spot on. Let me just show you something that the Environment Minister Tanya Plibersek said in Parliament today. We know that the nuclear fantasy proposed by those opposite is too slow and it's too expensive. We know it's too expensive. The we know it's too New expensive. England. Look, this cracks me up, the too slow, too expensive line, because we're now, we have a, a, a new, a, a, an electricity grid in crisis because the renewables transition is both too expensive and too slow. Yeah, you're right. And... Uh, this is where, are we making decisions based off cost or are we making decisions based off what's best for the Australian energy market? And I would say that at the moment, we really don't know what we're making decisions on and the excuse of cost is being hidden behind uh, analysis that hasn't had a detailed look at what real nuclear costs look like. They are handpicking programs that have gone over budget programs that have taken longer, but ignoring programs that have gone really well. And I use the UAE as a really great example. They went from a zero to now quite successful large nuclear power production quite quickly. Uh, and I think Australia has the capacity to do that but we need to allow the professionals to have a look at this and plan it properly and in detail. Well, exactly. We've got the opportunity to learn and see uh, which countries have done it best and basically buy reactors uh, off the shelf, uh, which I think the Emirates did. I think they uh, bought in a, a Korean plant uh, uh, that was constructed with them on time and, and on budget, uh, as you say. This is the point. If these criticisms about nuclear being such a failed technology, so inappropriate... Uh, you look at Korea, you look at the Emirates, you look at Finland, you look at Sweden, you look at the UK, the US, France in particular, uh, China, Taiwan, uh, J Japan. Uh, these countries are not economic basket cases and uh, they're, they're, they're actually looking to triple their nuclear output because they know it does the job they need. Yeah, that's right. And they are investing in their industry. And I think this is a real missed opportunity for Australia if we want to take Australian manufacturing, mining, the resources sector seriously. We need to give them the power to be able to do that. And unfortunately, 
renewables don't provide a lot of the thermal power output that these industries need. And so we need to provide an option that is still going to achieve our net zero climate goals. But at the moment, we're not even considering nuclear, which yeah. I think is a really missed opportunity. Yeah, we've got to keep on it. Thanks for joining us, Jasmine. I appreciate it.